Mike the Troop Jackson back with another edition of Fighters Talk. And once again, I'm joined by my main man, Sage Northcutt. Sage, you're getting ready for your third UFC fight. How you feeling? Yes, sir. I'm feeling great. Thanks. Thanks for coming over and doing this for me. Of course. My man. Come on. Everybody know me and say that's my man right here. Uh, you're taking on, uh, you're undefeated. Yeah, uh, you're all undefeated, 7-0, 2-0 in the UFC. Andrew Hallbrook is undefeated. He's 11-0, 1-0 in the UFC. Is that any kind of pressure on you? No, sir. There's no pressure. Actually, the first two fights, there wasn't really any pressure either. So that's that's always good to know. It's like you go out there to put on a great show and have fun. So third fight, it should be uh, more fun this time. Every single fight that goes up, it's, it just keeps getting more fun. Now, Andrew, uh, not many people know about him. Uh, what is your take on your opponent, and have you seen any film on him? I haven't seen too much, but I have heard that he likes to grapple. So okay. uh, that's great. I like to grapple, too. I consider myself a grappler. So it's going to be it's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait to put on a great show. Now, the event's taking place, uh, UFC on Fox 18. Uh, you're on TV once again. Uh, how does it feel to, to, to not necessarily be on Fight Pass where people have to get a subscription to watch, but it's on free TV and just anyone can tune in? How, how is that? You know, it's, it's a huge honor because Fox is huge, Fight Pass is awesome, so just getting to fight for the UFC in, in general is just incredible opportunity. So I'm just uh, blessed to get to have three fights so soon, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, this is your third fight in the UFC, uh, and just how, how many months has it been? Oh, I want to say you've been in there five months or so, a little bit, give or take, a few months? Something like that. I think maybe four months even. Okay. Yeah, pretty quick. So you're fighting more frequently now. Um, is, is it training change or anything like that for you, or are you just same, consistent schedule? Same schedule. Yes, sir. Just always trying to correct my technique, uh, make myself better, working on different position situations that I might run into in the, the octagon, and just overall improve my game. Now, the last fight we took on Cody Fister, um, it, it seems like the, uh, your opponents are sort of trash talking. They're, they're talking a little bit more. Um, and people that, not, people that are not even on your radar uh, are kind of calling you out a little bit to maybe get themselves on the radar. Uh, how, how do you feel about that? And that's actually pretty funny. That's, <laughs> that's, that's nice because having people call you out and uh, do that, that's, that's super nice. I've only had two fights in the UFC. And what, it's been a few months. So to have people that have been in the UFC for so long or years and they're calling out me that's only 19, that's only had two fights, I think that's super nice. It has to be something. Ha you have to feel that way because typically when you get guys in the UFC at that level, um, the ultimate goal obviously is to be champion. And you want to call out someone above you, whether you're in the top 10, top 15, or wherever. But it seems like Sage Northcutt is a person that's on everyone's radar at 155 pounds. Oh, thanks, Mike. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, how, how does that make you feel? Oh, it makes me feel great. I mean, like you said, they should be, they shouldn't be calling out someone that's only had two fights and uh, is brand new to the UFC, 19 years old. Everybody should get a chance to be able to learn and work them work their way up as a fighter. So, uh, someone that's been in the UFC that long, they should be going for the champion or, or going for a top 10 guy. There's no point to go back to someone that's lower than them. Right. That makes sense. Uh, uh, agree. Uh, after fight, you know, with, with Cody, uh, was there anything that you took away from that where you were able to learn? Sure, absolutely. So there's there's always something I'm learning. Uh, the octagon was actually 25 feet, so it wasn't 30 feet that time. I didn't know coming into the to the competition, coming into the octagon, until I actually was walking out, getting in there. So uh, that would have changed my game plan all around. Uh, right off the bat, I could have taken him down instead, and that could have been the plan instead of instead of throwing kicks or throwing punches and standing up for a split second and getting uh, pressured. So. Uh, the game plan could have been different and could have could have hopefully ended the fight quicker. Now, for you, how much of a difference is going from, let's say, the large pay-per-view, the the like the 30-foot or 33-foot cage to the smaller cages? Uh, how much does that affect your game plan? It definitely affects. So what it definitely affects like the movement pretty much. If if you have that distance, um, how much distance there is backing up to the edge of the octagon, and then also uh, creating like different scrambles and and having more uh, wrestling added into their grappling possibly because you have that opportunity to clinch up easier. So that definitely changes. But um, but now going into the future fights, I, I'm gonna know if it's 25 foot or 30 foot and be able to correct that. Yeah, that's something you, you gotta know going into it to make sure you game plan well. Uh, outside of fighting, 
how has life changed for you? Because, man, it, it, you're superstars. You're super sage, man. How, how's life outside of uh, fighting? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, life's great. I just just finished training actually, and uh, everything's going great. School actually just started back up today for me for this semester, so uh, I'll be doing school and then getting ready for my fight coming up January 30th. I'm excited for that. I know you got your fight coming up. <laughs> ah, look at that! <laughs> I'm pumped up to see that. <laughs> Man, we're all pumped up to see yeah. that as well. Uh, you got school coming up. Will that affect training at all? You know, school affects the training a little bit just because you have to put in the time to study and then uh, correlate the training in there too. But, but overall, no, it's not bad. I've, I've cut back on the classes. So, of course, engineering is a big workload just in general. So even taking a few classes is still a lot of work. But uh, overall, it's a blast. And just getting to do all of it, it's just, it's just uh, making time and having fun doing it. Yeah, a lot of people thought that uh, there were some, some rumors going around that you would possibly take a little time off from school. Obviously, that's not the case since you started up today. Uh, is that the plan going forward, just maybe take it a few classes here at a time as opposed to taking semesters off? Absolutely. So take a few classes, um, maybe for the next semester or, or maybe even possibly it depends on how the fighting keeps going and what, what I'm doing. And hopefully, I'd like to do uh, movies, more commercials, stuff like that in the future. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And then I could take a break from school in the future. You can always go back to school. So That's true. Well, there you have it. Super Sage Northcutt, you can catch him at UFC Fox 18, January 30th against Andrew Hallbrook. Fox Sports 1, right? That's right. There you go. Tune in. See Sage Northcutt.